Hey everyone, my name is Giselle for, for the punks and this is Leanna. Leanna, if you want to introduce yourself. I'm Leanna Firestone and I'm a singer-songwriter. All right, and I have a couple questions because I was looking through your Instagram, specifically your bio, which is unreliable oh. narrator and self-proclaimed singer-songwriter. If you want to tell us more yes. about that. Um, well, they're kind of interconnected, if I'm being honest with you. Um, like I said, I'm a self-proclaimed singer-songwriter. I, I said so uh, when I introduced myself. Um, I was saying that long before other people recognized me as such. And the stories that I tell in my songs uh, may or may not always be true. So take them as you will. I, what caught my attention was the unreliable narrator. Yeah. I thought that was really clever. Uh, um, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, how did your career in singing and songwriting start? Like, what does that pro what did that process look like? <laughs> well, it's actually kind of funny. Um, the beginning, the beginning was like uh, in eighth grade. I started writing my own songs, but I've been singing for like as long as I could talk. Um, that was always the plan was to be a singer. And then I started songwriting as I got older. I had stories I wanted to tell or whatever. Um, and I started, you know, in the worst year of everybody's life, uh, 2020, I started to post on TikTok uh, a little bit more frequently than, than normal. And I was talking about anime specifically, like the genre of anime. And um, I ended up posting this little snippet, I, I was gaining following for anime and I was like, well, you know, I'm in school for songwriting. I wanna be a singer songwriter. So how am I gonna interconnect this? <laughs> and I ended up posting this song that I had written for a character, um, like a character from an anime. <laughs> and that did, uh, I think it got like 50,000 likes or something. And I was like, this is the height of fame. This is, you know, <laughs> as good as it's ever gonna get. And I remember, you know, seeing about a thousand people in my comments being like, you should release this, you should put this out, blah, 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 blah. And I was like, okay, yeah, this will be the first song I ever put out. Um, and whenever I did, it, it ended up doing like, well, um, and better than any, uh, any of myself or my roommates or my friends or my family, anybody that knew me at the time could have ever anticipated or imagined. And from there, I ended up gaining more and more of a following for music and then put out my eventual EP, but it started from a song about uh, Yamaguchi from Haikyuu, which is a volleyball anime. I've heard of it. <laughs> I've never seen yeah, it, but yeah. I was like, oh, <laughs> that's so interesting. Yes. Yeah. So kind of going off on that, in a couple words, how would you describe your music? Um, <laughs> first thing that comes to my mind is, is sad, um, but it's more of especially the music I have out right now, it's, um, I've actually never been asked this question before, so really? I've never even considered it. No, nobody, I don't want to say nobody cares. <laughs> um, I would say, I would say it's honest. Um, I mean, it's about stuff that happened to me or stuff I wanted to happen to me. So, uh, honest and emotional, I think is what I would describe it as, but I think that, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. So also going into more of your music, I, looking at my like research, May was a busy month for you. Like you put out your EP, you had a single two weeks notice, and then you have a sing a uh, cover of Ben Platt's song, go Row As We Go, that just came out. How, yes. where does all May this inspiration come from? <laughs> what? <laughs> well, okay, as, like I said, uh, in, in the worst year of everyone's life was, was my best, which kind of, um, was very hard to navigate having like success while also everything is falling apart all of the time. And everyone is angry and upset everywhere. Um, so in, in that, in quarantine, it, it lended me a lot of time to write and to think and to, to sit in whatever emotion I was feeling at the time. So it, it lent me a lot of material, um, to be able to post all the time and to write and to you know say this is what I'm working on this is what I'm doing and as uh I put out that first song uh, I got signed off of that first song to my label which is 45 records um and so they were kind of like you know what are what are your plans what do you want to do and I was like well I want to put out an EP that's like you know long long-term 
goal is to is to do that next year. Um, but on top of that, I also know TikTok works very fast. People get tired of you very fast. You have to be constantly, you know, in this content machine, if you will, mm-hmm. um, to be, you know, capitalizing on these moments of virality. And so when things go viral or they go viral and then they stop being viral and then they go viral again, um, you know, as, as these waves come in, you kind of have to capitalize off of whatever is working at the time. And so for me, the May 14th EP plan was always uh, happening. It, that was planned for, you know, a number of months ahead of time uh, through my label. And they were working on this project called Turn Her Up, which is... Um, a campaign that they were doing for women in the industry, um, because as I'm sure you're aware of, there's a lot less of us than there are of men. And um, yeah. And and so they were like, let's, you know, do something that's talking about women. And I was like, yeah, cool. I agree. And so they were like, we're going to do this campaign of where you cover a song um, that has a a woman writer on it. And so immediately I was like, yeah, I want to do grow as we go. So that was planned back in like February, but two week notice, (laughs) Two week notice had its little moment of virality um, at the beginning of end of April, I think, and um, it it quickly became my most liked TikTok like that I had ever put out. It got like eight hundred thousand likes, and I was like, "Whoa, that's a lot." <laughs> um, a lot of people seem to really like this this beginning of the song that I had started writing, and I had originally like planned to to keep it in the wheelhouse and like maybe release it on an album or something later. And um, then it went viral again, had this like a new surge of likes and comments or whatever, like a a week after it had originally been posted. And I went to my label and I was like, hey, um, is there any way we can like put this out sooner than than on like a long form project? And they were like, yeah, if you get us something tonight, we can put it out uh, the day before your EP comes out. And that was... uh, (laughs) at like 11 a.m and so I was like yeah okay uh, I can try to have something for you by tonight and I literally called like um my producer Caleb and I was like hey can I use your studio like all day today and can you have me a mix by like tonight and he was like um uh, um sure yes I guess and so I thank God, literally thank God for Caleb. I was like, I need you to drop everything you're doing because we're going to be busy today. (laughs) And so I ended up getting that recorded and uh, given to my label and they were like, okay, cool. We can have this come out the day before your EP. But that was the only one that wasn't like planned months in advance, but it was May was very, very busy for me. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, I was like looking at it and I was like, a single a cover and an ep like i do it all I yeah do it all. <laughs> and tiktok on top of that yeah because you post pretty frequently right yes i used to post a lot more frequently than i than i do now i used to post like three or four times a day mm-hmm. which how i ever did that i don't know um do not know do not ask me i do not remember how <laughs> um but now i post um like three or four times a week. Honestly, I go based off whatever validation I got from the previous TikTok. So if I, if it got a lot of likes or a lot of comments, whatever, I'm like, oh, I'm good. I'm good for the next couple of days. Mm -hmm. Um, But if it didn't, then I'm like, oh, I have to, I have to post tomorrow. I have to post later today. I have to, I have to cover that up. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) I mean, the comments all seem pretty supportive. Like there's people always asking, is this going to be released? Yeah. Is this going to be released? I don't know. I'll let you know when I know. I don't know. <laughs> My favorite ones are like, is po- is your song from post like February 21st going to be released? <laughs> Girl, they would comment on my Instagram being like, really? is Phantom Pain is going to be released? I'm like, I don't, let me work that out. I don't know. <laughs> also love that you just gave it a name. Like, I know. It, like it probably won't be called that, but I, yeah, I, I haven't really, I've experienced hate on maybe like a couple of posts, but it's only because people just assumed that they knew what the story was behind it. And then they were wrong. Um, Misogyny, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Um, But generally like 99% of my comments, 99.5% of my comments are all like very, very nice, which I think I've had like a way easier time than a lot of other people that I know. 
Yeah. Which I'm um, very I was a little surprised because <laughs> it's TikTok and like people yeah. can get, as you said, like people will lose interest fast or will like be so quick to bash it. But all your comments are pretty like, when is this going to get released? Like they're so excited to hear yeah. about your music. Yeah. Yes. Uh, which is very validating. <laughs> To get more into your EP, and I kind of have an idea of where this name came from, but how did you decide on the title, <laughs> Your Name? Okay, um, Your Name. So if you if you know anything about me, um, like I said, with the anime thing, and um, before it was an anime, I just pick a special interest group to focus my time and energy on at uh, whatever age I'm at. So before it was anime, it was um, One Direction and Five Seconds of Summer. Um, and then it became Harry Styles and Five Seconds of Summer, and then it became anime. But I'm still very much a fan of, you know, Harry Styles, One Direction, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but um, I talk a lot about uh, fan fiction and being in, in a fan, uh, fandom, if you will, whatever fandom it is at the time is very important to me and my personality, the people I meet and the people I talk to. And so as I was getting into um, music, especially on TikTok or whatever, um, anime played a very big part of that. And being a part of the anime community on TikTok played a really big part of, of my success. And I will never, ever, ever bash that even though it is a little bit embarrassing to you know, have that be why I entered the music industry. Um, I will never ever bash their support or what they did for me because it's got me right where, where I am. Um, but as I was writing these songs and um, thinking about, you know, what am I gonna call like the first long form work that I put out? I wanted it to be some sort of homage into being a part of a fandom or, or to anime or to, you know, that side of things, I guess. And somebody somewhere commented on one of my videos I have no idea where it is um and they were like you should call your first album y slash in your name which is normally what uh is written in whenever you're self-inserting into a fan fiction if you are unfamiliar with fan fiction lore um y in ellen is your name last name um the, the self-insert character of whatever whatever fan fiction. And I was sitting with my roommate, Rosie, we were watching the Taylor Swift long pond sessions on Disney plus. And I looked at her and I was like, should I call my EP your name? Like why slash in? And we just both had this like recognition of like, yes, that is what it has to be. That is, and, but it was from a comment. And I have no idea where that comment is now. Obviously I've, I've, I've gotten quite a few of them since, um, but somebody commented it and I was like, yeah, it should be that they are right. And I ended up talking to my label and being like, Hey, can I, can I name this, this as like an homage, to like being a fan of like a lot of things. And they were like, yeah, sure. Whatever. <laughs> and so they let me, and that was, that was what it was. Oh my God. That's so interesting. Um, yeah. more so about the process. Like, what is that? How did that look like putting together what you said, like your first like your debut EP, like how did you, yeah. out of the many songs you write, how did you choose this is what it's gonna sound like? Yeah, um, well, I had, it did not look the same at the end as it did at the beginning. Um, when I was starting to plan it, I had, um, I knew it was always gonna be six songs and I knew that Strawberry Mentos, which was my debut single, um, was gonna be on it and five other songs and so I had like a number of songs that I was like okay it could be this one or it could be this one or whatever and then we had decided on on five um like me and my label mutually because you know they were funding it so they had to <laughs> they had to have some sort of say um so I sent them you know demos and I was like you know do you like this do you like this blah blah and we had sat down and we had agreed on five and then I normally um, when I'm posting a TikTok, it is number one, not done. Number one, not released. Um, like it's, it's not done. It's not released. What I have of whatever song I'm singing is normally um, what I'm posting. <laughs> and so it's trial and error for me to see what people like, which is good in a way, but also in a way that there's not a lot of surprise when, when the full thing comes out of like, this is brand new. I've never heard this before. It's like, okay, I'm testing to see what you guys like, like my, my audience on TikTok, um, what they like in order to de decide what was going to be on it. So if there was something that did really, really well, which least favorite only child did really, really well. Um, when I posted the snippet of it that I had, um, 
that one did really, really well. And I was like, yes, okay, let me put that. And I, you know, changed out one of the other ones. And then I had um, burnt out, had a moment where it, it, I think it got like 90,000 likes or something. But that was one that I, I got asked about a lot after to where I was like, yeah, I, I kind of feel like this one should be on it too. And, um, and so there was moments here and there of, okay, this had its little viral moment and this had a little viral moment. And, and I want, obviously, to give people what they want <laughs> and yeah. so if they're saying you know asking me months later about this one specific one like is this out is this going to be out um that was one that ended up being like put up for consideration of like hey should we switch this one out for this one or like and um depending on what my label thought or you know whether or not they said yes or we don't care or whatever i ended up switching in and out of uh of whatever song but i wanted all of the songs um so there were some that people would constantly ask about and I'd be like, mm, I don't know. Um, <laughs> I wanted all of the songs to have this sort of self insert feel because I knew far before what was going to be on it, um, what I wanted it to be called and what I wanted the, the thematic um, overall to be, which was why. And so I wanted all of them to feel as though you personally, whether that be me or whoever is listening, um, to feel like you are the character and the main character that is singing and or being sung about um, in all of the songs. So all of them are supposed to have this uh, theatric sort of feeling um, as you listen to them as though you can imagine a scene like a movie kind of. Yeah. Um, the way that I would read fan fiction, so. So interesting. And it definitely gives off that feel. I think especially with like the your name, I was like, your name could be her, it could be me, it could be anybody. And then <laughs> listening to the one. songs, I was like, this is about me. How does she know? Yeah. I think How even in my know? notes I put, she's singing about me and I don't like it. <laughs> I don't remember what song it was for specifically. I know that there were a lot where I was like, this is about me. <laughs> but going more into like, the emotional songs, um, specifically yeah. Least Favorite Child. And then after I listened to it, Redacted. Is there some like fear that comes with being that vulnerable on your debut <laughs> EP? Oh, yes. Yes, absolutely. Um, so yes, very much. I'm, I'm scared all of the time. <laughs> um, I, when I posted, um, <laughs> when I posted the snippet for uh, least favorite only child specifically I remember like I was in a fight with my mom so that was why I posted it as well um <laughs> I was like yeah because we were in a fight about TikTok and how I'm too open on TikTok <laughs> and so yeah and she was like you cuss too much you're like yeah whatever and I was just like um you're you're a boomer and you don't even use the app unless you're monitoring what I'm doing so I don't trust your opinion on how to run a social media mom. Sorry. Um, and, but I went back to my room and I was, and I was angry and I'd had that song, you know, whatever for a while. And I just posted a little snippet um, expecting absolutely nothing to come out of it um, because it was not a song about a character. The caption on the very first video that I posted was like, sorry, this is not about a character because all of my songs up until then had to do with like characters from anime. And it, you know, it, it did so well or whatever, so fast. And I was literally, it was the first two verses. So I was talking about wanting to crash my car into a light pole, um, just so people would pay attention to me a little bit more, uh, like just a little bit more. And, <laughs> and I remember like having that blow up and being like, holy shit, everyone knows, everyone knows now, like the way that I think and feel. And at first that was very scary. But as more and more comments started coming in, especially on that one, um, people were like, oh my God, I didn't know that like anyone else felt like this. I thought I was just like selfish my whole life. And so in the way that it was so scary for me to like have everyone know, it also like was validating for me that people understood what I was going through. But it was also very, very um, artistically satisfying to have people come back to me and be like, I didn't know anyone else felt like this. Like your song was the first time I knew like thinking about suicide in, in a means for attention way was normal. Like <laughs> it's not normal, but it's not, you know, you're not alone in those feelings. And that for me was like, least favorite only child will always be, will always be special for me in that way because 
that was something that I could lend other people like uh, relief on, I guess. Yeah. Um, and redacted. Uh, <laughs> um, I still have. <laughs> I still have not posted about redacted to TikTok because of how vulnerable it is, mm-hmm. um, which was very very um, different for me. I think normally I'm I'm open to a fault because I I care, but I also don't care in a way of like I don't really care if people know how I feel about this. Um, but redacted um, redacted is a little bit different. Um, <laughs> I I had liked uh, this this person, and immediately we met and I liked them, and I found out that they liked me immediately as well, and it was very strange for me because I was like, ha, you are not a cis man. And I've never ever in my whole life liked someone that was not a cis man. And so I was sitting there um, realizing that I was um, not straight Mm -hmm. uh, while also having to like, while confirming that for myself, I was also having to confirm it for someone else. And redacted was, Um, before I had confirmed it to that person you know like I like you and this means I'm changing my identity and my sexuality Um, I was like you know it seemed like it would be easier if I just ghosted and I never spoke to that person ever again Um, because I don't want to um, for lack of better words pull the straight people bullshit that you see in movies where they'll like experiment and then they'll be like, wait though, I'm actually straight, I just remembered. Um, So I didn't wanna do that and I didn't wanna hurt that person. So I was like, maybe I should just leave before this starts, which is not what I ended up doing. Um, (laughs) No, it was not. We ended up talking for uh, um, many number of months, me and and said person, and they they know that song is about them and um, they did (laughs) not like it. (laughs) No? Yeah. Oh no. Well, we were, we were together, together Uh in quote at, uh, not when it was released, but when it was being made, being produced. And I remember like sending it to them and being like, so like, what do you think about this? (laughs) And they were like, um, did you actually think about, about leaving? And I was like, oh (laughs) yeah. Uh And, um, it made them upset obviously and I was like yeah very sorry um but we were we were still together at the time so it was it was fine but um I still because of that how scary that was and um how personal and vulnerable that one is for me specifically um I do not I have not talked about it on TikTok at all so I just kind of put it out there and I was like okay like you guys like it (laughs) you guys you guys like this one kind of going as a follow-up question to that, how do you, like, these songs are personal. How do you, like, how do I, oh, how do you (laughs) approach the people that these songs are about? And you're like, do you like it? Especially with, like, the hard-hitting, these are my feelings. Yeah. But the song also kind of involves you. Yeah. Um, Well, generally, I don't. Normal, well, because, Um, people give me breadcrumbs of love and I write about them for years. And so normally I'm not actively in relationships and then, um, you know, writing songs about these people and they're hearing them as they're coming out. This was like very new for me to be uh, releasing music and also involved with somebody. And so that was like a brand new thing for me as well to be like, hey, I know, you know, I have an EP coming out and I'm, you know, finishing up the recording of it. And um, in case we're, we're still together, um, when, this, when this happens and you're hearing this breakup song that I wrote um, about a breakup that didn't happen between us, <laughs> um, maybe you should hear that before everyone else. Um, so normally that's not what's happening. Normally people are hearing it like with, with closure that was written about a guy um, like that I, never dated because I've never dated anyone or kissed anyone or whatever it's always been talking or whatever that I had uh just had a crush on (laughs) like four years before and um yeah he I don't know if he knows if it's about him or not but I did not reach out to him and and say you know like hey this song is obviously about you (laughs) because I think he he does not think about me at all so why would I need to but 
for redacted in specific, that one was one where I was like, yeah, I feel like I should probably, um, I should probably let them know that, that this is coming out. And I did tell my mom, people ask me that question all the time of, did you tell your mom about least favorite only child? And I was like, yeah, she heard it. And yeah, she doesn't like it, <laughs> but she didn't really have to say, so. <laughs> right, your music. <laughs> yeah. On a more lighter note, I noticed that you yeah. made a TikTok about being on the iTunes singer songwriter chart, which congratulations, by <laughs> the way. How does oh, that feel? You. Like, oh my God, it's ridiculous. And it was on the day that you dropped your EP, right? Yes, yeah. That's um, wild. I freaked out. I freaked, okay, well, I've had like songs, you know, um, go up in the charts and, and the highest that any of my things ever did was I got number six uh, with, with Least Favorite Only Child. And that was, you know, a very big deal for me. Very big freak out, just, you know, even be on it at all. Um, but to have, to have my debut EP um, be, I think the highest I got was number eight, but when I posted about it, it was number 10. Just to have it even be in, in, in top 10 to where you didn't have to like open the long list, you know, like you could just scroll. Yeah. Um, was a feeling that I cannot describe and will never forget. It's so like warm and validating. And um, if you think of like, you're waiting, you know, your whole life to put out, to put out something, put out a long form work and then you do it and it's like well received. <sighs> it just makes you wanna scream and cry all of the time, which is exactly <laughs> what I was doing the entire day that it was out. The day it came out, I was, screaming and crying the whole day <laughs> but yeah it was very I was I was oh it's cutting off scream um okay awesome perfect are things better I think we missed like the last part of it but the sentiment was there. I was screaming. I was crying. I was yelling all day long. I was very excited. Yes. <laughs> I was just like, oh my God. On Because I like scrolled down through your TikTok and I was like, oh yeah, she put her EP out this day and charted on that and charted on the same day, which is crazy. Yeah. But yeah. yeah. Crazy. I still, I'm still like, because I have more questions about motivation and time because Perfect. There's a lot that we need to get into with that. Oh, okay. But okay, perfect. More specifically, like your TikTok, because okay. for the people who are hopefully watching, um, okay. if you didn't know, and if you don't follow Leanna, you should. Um, she posts a lot of snippets of songs that kind of don't always make it to songs, but are like little snippets with big meaning, I'm going to say. Yeah. Um, but you did mention that your account was an anime account before. How did you make that transition? And were you a little worried when you started posting your own music? Oh, yes. Okay, well, <laughs> number one, there's so many concerns when you're like doing something and then you're doing something else. I mean, any sort of leap like that, if that's a person, if that's a job, if that's, you know, as simple as TikTok content, there's always going to be some sort of worry in that change. Um, for me, I had a couple of basic concerns, which was number one, that people were going to think I was trying to do music as like a cash cash grab yeah um because a lot of tiktokers do that <laughs> um it was not i was in college for music always wanted to be a musician before i started talking about anime i just am a fan of a lot of things so that ended up being what did well for me um but as i started to transition more into into musical stuff it was it was always a concern that people were going to view it as as a cash grab um, which they didn't, which I was very thankful for, um, or that they were going to, it was not going to be well received, you know, like uh, people didn't like it. I wasn't as good as I thought I was. People wouldn't receive the messages of the songs or wouldn't understand it. Um, but as I started to like dip my toes in, the more people were like, e when is this going to be released? When is this out? Is this out already? And so to have that instant validation of, of TikTok, I guess, where you can immediately receive feedback upon posting something, which is not similar to like when you're just releasing music, um, I felt a lot more comfortable, you know, being like, okay, I really love anime. I still love anime. And I would still talk about anime if, if I thought more people wanted to hear that from me than, than music. Um, but I didn't make like a full transition into just doing like musical based content until like 
Fe uh, February, March, April area. So I was still talking about anime like up until then, but it was more sporadic. I was trying to time it out of being, you know, it was all anime and now it's like a little bit of music and then it was like half and half and then it was like all music. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And as I was talking about before, most of your videos are like little snippets of songs. How do you decide mm -hmm. what songs get made into like start to finish or they just stay as snippets? Some of them, some of them like are full songs and then I'll post the snippet and then be like, okay, how does this do? Like, should I, should I put this out in full? Normally what happens though is like, I'll sit down at my little piano or with my little guitar and I'll write, you know, like a verse and a chorus or two verses or whatever. And then from that, I'll be like, damn, this is really good. <laughs> Let me post this on TikTok. And if it does well, then that's more of a consider, more of a incentive, I guess, um, for me to finish it. So not, <laughs> not all the songs get finished, um, but some of them definitely do. <laughs> and from the full songs is like, you know, okay, let me post a little bit more or maybe it's an immediate like I know this is good or I know this is garbage and the only thing that is good about this is the part that I posted um so in terms of like making it into full songs getting asked about it a lot is <laughs> getting asked about it quite a bit is one is an incentive for sure um because I'll have people like months later be like about this post in particular when is this going to be released this is why I followed you and I'm always like mm -hmm. So sometimes I'll sit down and I'll be like, okay, so many people have asked me about this one in particular today. Such a good problem to have. Um, I guess I will, I guess I will sit down and maybe I will try to finish it. And so that's typically how it goes is if I just get like, hey, we, are you going to finish this one? If I get that enough, I will probably finish it. Um, or I will write a little bit more and then post that a little bit more and see how that does. Um, but in terms of like, is there any particular, you know, we know this one is going to be finished. No, there's no method. There's no real rhyme and there's no real reason. <laughs> I just get, I just get asked about it. And then I'm like, okay, sure. Yeah, I guess I'll try to finish it. <laughs> Going off on that, has there been a song where you're, or a snippet where you're like, mm, this isn't going to work. And then you have to come back to it. And then it turns into a full song. Yes, quite a few. There's like, there's been um, one in particular called Phantom Pain that I put down like for a while, like many months, like three months. And I was like, I just can't finish it because I would write like new things on it. And I would be like, I hate this. I don't like this at all. But again, I would constantly be like, hey, when is Phantom Pain going to come out? And I was like, I really like this concept. I still wanna like write it. I just, you know, every time I try, I think it's garbage. And then I ended up writing like this one extra little bit. And I was like, ha, oh, ha, this is really good. And um, from that little like one line of, of changing and rearranging, I ended up finishing like the whole song within that, when, within that day. So not all hope is lost if I ever, I'm like, I'm not gonna finish that song. This is garbage. I'm not, I'm not gonna put this out. It's just, okay, give me some time. Let me rewrite, let me make revisions. But um, yeah, there is definitely times where I will think something is garbage. I'll trash it. And then I'll come back to it like months later and be like, this is, this is really good though. <laughs> <laughs> and again, obviously went through your whole TikTok and you have a series on your TikTok of reading the playlist that your songs get added to <laughs> yes do you have yes. a favorite one <laughs> no I don't have a favorite one there's way too many good ones for me to for me to say this is my favorite uh mm -hmm. by far um I definitely I don't know if people just like don't realize that like uh, like artists can go through them or whatever I can see the top 100 in within a certain time period so it's like all time last 28 days last week and today and so I can go through like individual songs one by one and see, you know, from today, who's listening to my song, the, the top 100 amount of times. Um, but my songs have been added to over like 400,000 playlists. So obviously I have not, added? yeah, which is crazy. <laughs> but, um, I say that very nonchalantly, but in my head, I'm freaking out all of the time. Um, I know you think that's so calmly and I'm over here like, oh my God. Yeah. So it's like, okay, I see this certain amount, but people are always like, did you see mine this time? And I'm like, I, mm -hmm. <laughs> like there was so, there were so, so many. many. Um, I, one that definitely sticks with me is people will make references to like TikTok sounds or whatever. So whenever I see those and they can correlate it and like add playlist names to it, I, it's always very, 
that, those are normally my favorite is when I recognize. Um, one of my favorites uh, is uh, references to memes as well. So there's a meme that's like, damn bitch, you live like this. And uh, mm -hmm. a lot of my songs get added to, to playlists like that, where it's like, you live like this. Um, least favorite only child is on that one. So understandable. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. <sighs> so going back to like your career as a singer songwriter, did you have a moment where you were kind of like, this is it? Like, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to make it. I have that moment all the time, normally falsely. Um, but I do when I like, when I put out my first single, I thought, you know, maybe all time ever, it will get, it will get maybe 10,000 streams ever, which is a lot, especially when you're just starting out. 10,000 is like very, very big number. But I had, you know, like 14,000 followers, I think at the time, 12,000 followers. So I was like, you know, like maybe all time I'll get like 10,000. And then on the day that it dropped, it got 15, like 15 in one day. And I was like, ha, ha, ha 15,000 streams. Ha, ha. So um, when that happened, I was like, I've made it. This I've, yeah, this is the height of my career. This is the best I've ever been. Um, and then it started to do even more well I had labels reaching out to me and then I had my you know other viral moments on TikTok I had um <laughs> I had a, a moment uh a viral moment for um pretending to start an apology video and then <laughs> saying like I'm really sorry for looking this hot it's that's totally on me I take full accountability for that and um I remember like having non-musical moments do well was always moments where I was like I've made it. <laughs> I can <laughs> talk about this and this, and I've now made it because it wasn't about music. Um, but I have, I have moments like that all the time. I mean, charting on iTunes was definitely one where I was like, my EP is at number 10. It's at number 10. It's at number 10. It's at number 10. And being like, yep, this is the best it'll ever be. And I keep um, topping that I guess I think the next time that I'll when I when I put out merch, I put out merch very recently, um, and people were getting it like the day it came out. I was like, "How? Oh, this is the best it will ever be!" And I keep finding new ways to have things keep being the best that they'll ever be. Um, but you know, the the initial shock of having fifteen thousand on what I thought I was like get ten was probably like the realest feeling, I guess of yeah, I've made it. I've done it. I, I did it. I made it. Um, and I, I literally, anytime anything releases, I'm always in my room, bawling my eyes out, watching people like it. Yeah. Just crying profusely. <laughs> it's all well-deserved too. Again, your music is really well, good, you. <laughs> but thank also you. going back to the time management, cause we need to talk. How do you manage like to be a student, be a singer, be a TikToker, and like still stay so motivated. Poorly, <laughs> very no. poorly. Um, I I have moments of of uh, girl bossing and and um, being really motivated to do a lot of things at one time. Um, but I I like everyone. I'm just like you. I'm very normal. Um, I have you know those moments of of being burnt out on on school, on TikTok, on on writing and where I have to put it down. And I, I always get nervous in those moments of, um, of burnout that I've run out completely. <laughs> I've now run out and I will never be making anything as good as anything I've made before now, which is obviously a very scary thing to deal with, but it's been, you know, ingrained by TikTok that nothing that you have that's doing well right now is going to continue doing well forever. Um, so that, <laughs> That definitely um, lights a fire in its own way to feel like if I don't keep putting things out, people are going to forget about me um, in a way that traditional artists do not have to worry about because that's like the whole traditional thing it is people wait for you to put out new things as uh, TikTok artists don't really get that luxury of, you know, waiting I guess because if you don't capitalize on the virality of whatever song at the time uh is doing well you lose your moment and people forget um so I 
I only started doing TikTok like in the fall of last year. So I, I haven't been doing that very long and I haven't been doing um, putting out my music. I've been writing for a long time, but I haven't been putting out music or writing as much as I've been writing um, for any longer than uh, six or seven months. Um, so that's, it's still very new. The time management part of that is very new. Um, a lot of it comes from um, validation though. <laughs> of, like I said, my, my schedule is usually based off of whenever the validation from the previous post runs out. Um, so whenever I feel as though people are forgetting about me, um, I'm immediate to, okay, I need to write and make a TikTok today. And, and maybe then people will continue to care about me, which is a very surface level feeling. Um, but I am aware, you know, the, the beginning moments of your career are usually what make the rest of it. So that's, that's, um, its own motivator, I guess, to write and to perform and to be doing TikTok and, and music all the time, every time that I'm doing anything. Um, it is, as much as it has afforded me greatness in, in the things and success in the things that I'm currently doing, the music I'm currently writing and putting out, um, it has also taken a lot away from the traditional college experience and um, going out with friends or trying to date new people or seeing and and starting new activities or hobbies it's it becomes all consuming at certain points because that feeling of of people seeing and understanding and recognizing that you're good at what you want to do um runs out and you want to hold on to it for as long as you can so in certain ways it's like yes this has afforded me everything it has afforded me success um and, and happiness and living the life I always wanted to live, doing what I always wanted to do. But I also am now starting to understand the whole um, success isn't always great and it's not always what you want um, because it's it also takes some things away. It's also like TikTok and music and, and all of that. As much as it's all I do, it's also now like it is all that I I am. I, I, I hate to like <laughs> bring this to like a downer mood, but it takes, it takes so much to maintain and to run like a, a successful TikTok account that I think, you know, normal people that aren't, you know, thrust into you are normal. And now you are, you are now TikTok famous will never be able to understand that sort of like internal pressure of maintaining relevancy. Sorry for just rambling on that for so long. No, it's good. No, I feel it because well, I've never done TikTok, but like I can imagine that, especially with how frequently you post, it kind of has to be a little draining, a little like, okay, already planning. What am I going to do next? So it's it's understandable. Yeah. Um, yeah. Like maybe, Thank you. <laughs> but to bring the mood up, do you have any? Yeah, sorry. Um, no, it's okay. Again, very real, very vulnerable, very your brand. <laughs> um, are there yeah, any very, artists? Very my oh, it's cutting off again. I think we're good. Okay. Okay. Are there any <laughs> artists that you look up to? Or that inspire yes. you? Yes. Yeah, I have so many. Normally it's like, if you're thinking of like single girl with guitar, genre is um typically the people that I look up to and that I like um I really am a big fan of uh Macy Peters Dodie Clark Tessa Violet Lizzie McAlpine like traditional singer songwriters I'm also a really big fan of Eliza McLam who's another TikToker and uh you guys wrote something on her EP which is actually how I found out about you so whenever you reached out to me to be like do you want to talk about you know your stuff I was like yes y'all did Eliza so good because I love her writing and to, to have you guys do um, a good review on her I was like yes I would love to absolutely speak with you because I was I'm a really big fan of her um but yeah that's that's typically who I'm looking at um and listening to I also really just love like indie pop any subset of pop pop rock pop punk indie pop um that's like right up my alley but the obviously as a musician there's going to be far too many names for me to go through all of them right now <laughs> but this question this next question isn't going to be easier do you have a dream collaboration oh, okay. 
do I have a dream collaboration? Yes. Um, Who do you want to work with in the future? Oh. My like my number one right now, who I would say like, you know, right now, this is who this is. And if you asked me in two hours, the answer would probably change. But right now, my dream collaboration is Lizzie McAlpine, who's another singer songwriter, also on TikTok as well. So uh -huh, Lizzie happen. McAlpine. Yes. Let's hear it. Let's make it happen. <laughs> Anna and Lizzie collab win. Um right, yeah, waiting. <laughs> <laughs> Going more back to TikTok, what advice do you have for any artists who might just be starting out or considering using TikTok to promote their music? Yeah, okay, number one, do it. <laughs> people have <laughs> this like, people have this, this scared notion, I think, when they start promoting their music on TikTok that they're gonna be annoying or they're gonna be, it's not gonna be well received. And to be honest with you, it probably won't be. When you first start doing it, I mean, yeah, you're gonna be bad at it. That's like how it works. You, you're you bad and then you're better. Um, but my typical advice um, for you know people starting TikTok, specifically artists trying to be artists is uh, don't start as an artist. And that's only from you know personal experience. Um, start trying to talk about something niche in particular that's not as broad as just, you know, you're trying to be a musician and you're posting your music. Um, I, I've found, personally, that if you um, talk about a subject or you make videos around one particular thing, for me, that was anime, right? Um, that people will care about you as a person. And so they will in turn care about whatever you decide to throw yourself into. So if they, you know, they like your personality, they see that you're honest, you're real, you're funny, you're exciting or whatever. If music isn't the only thing that you do, I think people tend to care about you as a person more and then they in turn support your music, which is not always true in the reverse. If they care about your music, they may not always care about you as like a, as an individual, which I think, and you know, I can attest to as very, very much really helped me in my success to have people care about me, not only as an artist, but also just as their friend or as being a fan of an, an internet personality. To wrap up, sadly, my last question. Okay. What's next for you? Because I <laughs> might have seen, might have heard there's a possible album coming out if you want to tell us about yeah. that. <laughs> I would absolutely love to tell you about that. Um, yes. Okay. I'm so excited that you asked. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. So, yes, album coming out. Um, my official debut album <laughs> will be coming out on October 29th which is the day before I put out Strawberry Mentos last year. It's very intentional. It will be my full year of music. I'm very excited. Um, it will have 10 tracks on it. Um, I will not reveal to you what those tracks are right now, but I can tell you that the first single comes out on June 25th. Oh my God. June 25th. Yeah, it's very soon. Um, it comes out on June 25th in like three weeks. Um, it's called Tide. I'm trying to venture with that single in particular um more produced me very different than anything you've ever heard from me before oh. do you mind repeating the last part it kind of like started to oh yeah now and let's give okay, you your cool. time to talk about the album okay perfect um the album comes out on october 29th um which will be the day before Strawberry Mentos was released uh, in 2020. So my full one year of music, it will have 10 tracks on it, of which I will not be revealing right now, but 10. Um, the first of which, first song on the album, and also the first thing that you will hear from the album comes out on June 25th, and it's called Hide. Um, it is very different from any, like, Every artist says that every time they put out a single, you know, like, this is different from anything you've heard from me before. This is, when I say this is different, I mean, it's different, very different. Um, but it's called Hide and it comes out on June 25th. And I'm very, very, really excited about it. So I hope that everybody likes it as well. Oh my God, I'm already excited. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, it was such a pleasure talking to you. <laughs> you can really tell how passionate you are just from like talking about your music. Oh. Thank, you, thank, you, thank you. I'm always trying to come off as like I care. <laughs> so. No, and it shows, it shows. And you have every yeah. reason to be proud and passionate and have your moment of I'm successful. Here I am. <laughs> thank you. Thank you.
but other than that, that was my last question. Again, a pleasure to talk to you. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you for interviewing me. I obviously like, I know, I don't know if like people tell you, I'm sure that every time you, you talk to an artist or whatever, they're always like, I really love, you know, what you guys do, but like, I mean it with my chest. Like I've been a fan for a while now, ever since I read y'all talk about Miss Eliza McLam. And so I've, I'm, I'm so ecstatic. I'm, I'm really excited. Thank you for interviewing me. Thank you for like letting me talk about myself. Um, I really, really appreciate that. So thank you. <laughs> no, of course. And just to end it here, anybody who's watching, check out Leanna. If you want to plug your social media, go ahead. Oh, yes. Okay. I'm Leanna like Firestone. Yes. I'm Leanna Firestone on uh, Instagram. I'm also like Leanna Firestone on any listening platform that you may be able to find me on. But on Twitter and TikTok, I'm Leanna Eileen. So I think that's it. Cool. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, how do I stop recording?